it's Jenna. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to head off to New York City and I'm just finishing up my packing here because we are going for my friend's wedding. She is getting married over New Year's Eve. I am so excited for her. So that should be really fun, but we actually extended our trip so we could have time to explore the city. And as most of you know, I used to be a flight attendant. So I have been to Manhattan quite a bit, but my husband has not. So I'm going to kind of take him along and show him my favorite sites. And of course, bring you all along as well. And we are staying in Weehawken, New Jersey, which is just right across the river from Manhattan. And you actually get an insane view of the city from over there. And you just take the ferry back and forth. It's super easy. So that should be fun. And yeah, I will see you all in New York. All right, so we stayed at the Sheraton Lincoln Harbor, which was like five steps away from the ferry. And this was such a great option for getting into the city. The ferry comes every 20 minutes or so, and it was $9 per person one way. We just bought our tickets virtually on their website, so it was super flexible, and we never had a problem with crowds or needing to book in advance. We stayed in Weehawken just so we could be within walking distance of the wedding venue on New Year's. But honestly, this thing was so fast. It was basically just like a subway on the water. And it honestly felt like an attraction within itself because you get these gorgeous views of the city as you pull into the harbor and it's just cool to be out on the Hudson River. So since our morning flight had been delayed by an inoperative collision light, we had to wait until sunrise to take off, which was an hour and a half after we boarded. So we were pretty hungry. So we decided to swing by Los Tacos number one, which is a well-known spot for both locals and tourists. They have several locations on Manhattan, but we went to the Times Square one just because it was the closest to the ferry stop and we got there 15 minutes after they opened and there wasn't too much of a line but from what I've seen it can get crazy so definitely go early. These tacos are totally worth the hype and you really can just taste how fresh they are. Mike and I both got a plate with one steak, one pork, and one chicken taco and usually when I get a plate of different tacos there's an overwhelming favorite but truly every one was so so good and I guess if I had to pick my favorite would be the chicken and Mike's would be the pork and the guy next to us said his favorite was the steak. So what I'm saying is you really can't go wrong here. Just get here early and be prepared to stand and eat, but definitely a spot to hit up for flavorful and filling tacos. And then next, just because we were in the area, we decided to swing by Times Square. And if you haven't been here before, you have to at least come through and see it. But this is not really a spot where I love to hang out just because the crowds are so crazy. But it was really fun to see them setting up for the New Year's celebration. We kind of got a fun little behind the scenes look at that, which was neat. But I'm telling telling you this place is nuts we did decide to pop into the Disney store and it was the biggest Disney store that I have ever seen the ambiance of the lantern displays as you go up the escalators was super cool and it was just kind of fun to pop in for a minute but that was about our max with the Times Square activities so we then next decided to head on over to Bryant Park and here they have this super cool winter village that's open from October 27th to January 2nd. And the setting is super gorgeous, nestled below some of the skyscrapers. You can actually skate for free here if you bring your own skates, but you do have to pay to rent them. And this year you can actually reserve a skating time online ahead of time. And the ice skating rink is open through March. So that could be a fun activity if you are going in the later winter months. But this was just a really pretty setting to just sit and watch everyone ice skate. They also have a ton of food options while the winter village is going on lots of fun and unique snacks and treats they also have an igloo experience that you can book for a pretty penny but my favorite part was just walking around and looking at all of the special goods artwork and handmade products from local vendors they had a really great selection here so it was just kind of fun walking around but again this place got very crowded so we decided to move on over to the next crowded place which was Rockefeller Center and this is where they have the light show at Saks Fifth Avenue. It goes off every 10 minutes from 5 p.m. to 11 p.m. We were obviously a little early for that, but it could be cool to catch if you're over near this area after sunset. And the Rockefeller tree was super gorgeous and iconic. This ice skating rink was just as crowded as the Bryant Park one, but still cool to see. And we also swung into the St. Patrick's Cathedral, which was right next door. And it's always just so humbling to see this lovely church with its inspiring and grand architecture. They also had their nativity out, which was really special to see. And I just love that it had a little golden retriever in it. So cute. 
Next, we walked on over to the Central Park area, and I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I was pretty low on energy at this point, so I didn't take a ton of footage, but here you can walk by the Central Park Zoo and see some of the animals from afar. You can also rest your feet near the lakes, which is what we did. I love how scenic these are with the gorgeous bridges sprinkled throughout. And also, one of my favorite movies growing up was Balto, so obviously we had to go and see the Balto statue from the movie. And at this point, we were needing a little sugar pick-me-up, so we walked walked over to the Levain Bakery and it was a really cute walk through the residential area, very quiet and peaceful, but once we got to the bakery, there was a small line of maybe five people in front of us, but it went fast and here they are known for their cookies. And I know you might be thinking, how good can a cookie really be? Is it worth the hype? And I am here to tell you that it absolutely was. These cookies are unlike anything I've ever had before. They have a golden brown outside with a slight crunch and then the inside is soft, warm, and gooey and I will forever have dreams about this cookie. This is probably my favorite thing that I ate on this entire trip, which is really saying something. Mike got the chocolate chip and I got the oatmeal raisin and they were $5 each, but totally worth every penny. Next, we walked back to the harbor to catch our ferry back to the hotel and we timed it right so that we were out on the water right at golden hour. And once we made it back to Weehawken, we just took a little sunset stroll around the waterfront. Even though our legs were killing us, it was so worth it to soak up the gorgeous sunset set views of the city. All right, so this is our hotel room. It is very spacious as opposed to something you would get in Manhattan. So we have like a whole little office area, a separate TV, a pull-out sofa, and then this is the bed area. And we totally thought we booked a city view room, like a view of Manhattan, but I think it's the Weehawken city view. And then over there would be the water view on that side, but this is fine. We are really going to be in here anyways. And then this is the bathroom, nothing crazy. Um, we did book this just for location because our friend is getting married um, just like a couple buildings down. So it's an easy walk and it was much cheaper than staying in the city. So this is a good option because it is right next to the ferry. So taking your shoes off. Yeah. I know. <laughs> so I think we're just going to go to Whole Foods, grab some pizza, and relax for the rest of the night. Put our feet, up. Yes, <laughs> elevate and ice. <laughs> All right, so it's day two and we are much more well rested this morning. We went to bed super early, so it's like 6 a.m. and we're gonna try to catch the first ferry on over to Manhattan. And today is wedding day, so the wedding's at 7 p.m. So we're gonna try to like front load the first half of the day, come back and nap and then go to the wedding. So our first stop is going to be a really good looking bagel spot. It's very well known and they have like a million types of cream cheese that look out of this world. So we're gonna go head on over there and fuel up for the day. So after Mike and I went outside and waited for about 15 minutes wondering where the ferry was, I rechecked the schedule and missed the fact that on weekends the first ferry is at 9.55. So it wasn't too big of a deal, we just Ubered instead, which was kind of cool because we got to go through the Lincoln Tunnel, which is 1.5 miles long and goes underneath the Hudson River, which just blows my mind that all that water is above us and the whole thing is tiled, which is just crazy. So that was neat to see. But once we got into the city, our first stop was Liberty Bagels and this place gets very popular so I would recommend hitting this one early if you do come here because the line very often does go out the door but what's so exciting about this place is their wide variety of cream cheese options they have both sweet and savory ones and the hardest part honestly was picking one to order I'm not gonna lie I did a last second panic order with this one but honestly everything is so good so you really can't go wrong and Mike got the works which was bacon sausage egg cheese and and a hash brown on their signature rainbow bagel. And this was Mike's favorite thing that he ate on this entire trip. And I got a salt bagel with dill and herb cream cheese and the cream cheese was phenomenal. They definitely don't skimp on it either. They load that thing up, but the bagel was good too. I just wish it had a little bit less salt. Like I said though, it was a panic order. So I should have just ordered an everything bagel, but I'll do that next time. So with coffee in hand, we decided to head on over to some of the more touristy areas actually so that we could avoid the 
crowds that gather there later in the day. So we walked by the Radio City Music Hall and saw the iconic larger than life ornament decorations. And later in the day, it can actually be really hard to even get a picture here. So it was nice to just enjoy the spot without the crowds. And same thing with the Rockefeller tree. We actually got a picture in front of it this time. However, the ice skating rink was super crowded even at 8 a.m. We also strolled by Studio 1A where they filmed the Today Show, but sadly they were broadcasting from Washington DC this day. So the studio was empty and dark, but normally it's really cool to just walk by and see them broadcasting live. And then from there, we decided to take the subway south to the One World Trade Center. And you can buy a week Metro card pass, which is worth it if you're gonna be using the subway a lot or you're there for a long period of time. But we were just using it here and there to scoot ourselves around the city. So we passed on the pass and just swiped our credit cards to get through and it charged us $2.75 per ride. And not only is riding the subway one of the best ways to get around the city, but it's just a fun quintessential New York activity to check off the bucket list. And it's just fun to figure it out and use it to propel yourself around the city. However, you want to be prepared for some weird smells. Mike totally joked that they should make a gag gift candle with a New York subway scent. And I feel like that would be so funny for all of the gift shops to sell that. So once we were at the One World Trade Center, it was so tall that you couldn't even see the top of it through the clouds, which was crazy. And every time I'm here, it's just hard not to be super heavy with emotion. The whole memorial is very tastefully done and the reflecting pools are built to signify absence, which they do really well. And they're nearly an acre in size and they're the largest man-made waterfalls in North America. And this is one of those places that you can see pictures and videos of it, but it's just a different feeling that you get from reading through all of the names and standing in front of this spot. Next, we walked over to the Oculus, which was designed to look like a dove about to take flight to show that no matter what challenges the city faces, that hope will always prevail. And the architecture of this building is truly breathtaking, and it's actually a big hub for 12 of the subway lines. And they've also added lots of retail stores where you can shop as well. And one of my favorite things to see was the Strangers Project. And this is actually where people anonymously share their stories. And even though they were closed when we went Went. it was fun just reading through some of them if they're open when you go you can actually write your own story which I think would be really cool to do they're all anonymous and some are lighthearted, some are sad some are funny and it was just interesting to read so many different perspectives and stories next we took the subway over to Grand Central Station which has been around since 1913 and this place has so many beautiful historical architectural details and it's just fun to look up to see all of the constellations painted on the ceiling they also added dozens of small electrical lights to look like stars and it's just fun to imagine what this place felt like back in the day and like the name suggests this place is definitely grand and they also have a bunch of food options including Shake Shack and Bork Street Bakery and while we both love Shake Shack, we have one in our city, so we decided to try out a more local burger joint. So we walked over to 7th Street Burger, and this place is super simple, no frills. The menu is just burgers and fries, but this is just one of the best burgers I've ever had. They use a buttery potato roll for the bun, and they're just so juicy and flavorful. If you are a fan of hole-in-the-wall type burger spots, definitely check out 7th Street Burger. Next, we headed on over to the Chelsea Market area, which is located in the meatpacking district and this place is a super lively marketplace with lots of shops and restaurants and here they sell produce fresh cuts of meat and artisan cheeses it was also super cute to see this place decorated for the holidays it just added another layer with all of the twinkling lights but i am not going to lie this place got crowded it's definitely a super popular spot and the walkways are a little tight so it can get overwhelming at times but it's nice when you need an escape because the High Line is right outside. So the High Line was an old railroad that was actually destined for demolition, but the city rallied together to repurpose it into something that the modern public could use. And that's how the High Line was created. So this is a free park that stretches almost a mile and a half long above the city. And there's so many interesting art installations to marvel at along the way. And walking this is actually really cool because you can do the whole thing without being interrupted by cars or stops lights and all of the architecture and views of the city that you get along the way are just stunning and also when I've done this in the summer it's really pretty because the landscape
landscaping just comes to life with over 500 species of plants and trees that contrast the industrial city backdrop. Definitely one of the must-dos in New York, and actually if you walk north, it spits you out near the vessel. And the vessel is this really interesting building near the Hudson Yards that's made up of 154 interconnecting flights of stairs, and this was built as a redevelopment project of the area, and they had the stair part closed when we were there, but you could still walk around the base of it, which was still really neat to see, and this probably worked in our favor because I don't know if our legs would have been able to climb upstairs at this point, but it was just something that was fun to see, especially because it was right at the end of the High Line. All right, so the rain has picked up and we're gonna take this opportunity to bow out because we need a nap. So we're gonna rest up and go to the wedding, have some fun, bring in the new year, and I'm not sure when we'll see you next, but. Next year. <laughs> yeah, next year, see ya. So on our ferry ride back to the hotel, it was so insanely foggy. Mike actually was half joking when he pointed out where the life jackets were because you could barely see anything out the windows. And when we actually got to Weehawken, you couldn't even see the outline of the city at all. But luckily, when it was time to go to the wedding, the fog had cleared a bit, so the gorgeous view of the city was visible. So the wedding venue was at the Chart House, and this place was truly such a great experience. This would be a really fun night trip or sunset trip if you were staying in the city. It's totally worth the ferry ride, and the view is phenomenal. The drinks and food were both amazing, and Mike and I both got the fillets, and they were so good, and so were the mashed potatoes. And it was kind of cool because at midnight on New Year's Eve, we could see some of the fireworks and all the smoke coming from Times Square but truly the highlight of this trip was seeing my dear friend Melissa get married and this was just such a magical wedding for the sweetest couple and Melissa looked like an absolute princess congratulations to Melissa and Damon your wedding was so so beautiful and thank you so much for letting us be a part of it so the next morning we actually went back to Liberty Bagel because we enjoyed it so much the day before. And this time I went with a little bit of a sweeter choice. I got the rainbow bagel, which just tastes like a regular plain bagel and the birthday cake cream cheese. And this was super yummy. Mike got his same exact order from the day before. But after that, it was just time to head back to the Newark airport and go home. Thank you all so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I will see you all in my next video. Bye.